Well, hello, friends. Welcome to the Serenity OS update for March 2021. Uh, before we begin, let me tell you about sponsorship. So the Serenity operating system and all of my content about it is always going to be free and open source. Uh, but if you would like to support my work and maybe one day make it possible for me to do this full time, then there are three donation options. I'm on GitHub sponsors and Patreon for those interested in making a monthly recurring donation. And I'm also on PayPal if you prefer making a one-time donation. And you can find links to those services in the video description below. And of course, thank you to everybody who's already supporting me in some way. Uh, and welcome to all the new supporters. There's been a lot of new people uh, signing up to be supporters in the last month. And I'm really, really happy that you're all here. So uh, welcome. And okay, so let's take a look at uh, March. So the first thing um, you'll notice is that we've had a bit of visual changes to the desktop. The um, top menu bar is no more and we've moved everything downstairs here. And we now have a Serenity start menu that opens up um, the system menu here. And the um, applets that were previously in the top left have moved down to the bottom, um, previously in the top right have moved down to the bottom right. Um, and um, in addition to this, menus have now moved into the windows. So uh, instead of finding menus up here, you now find them in each uh, window. And speaking of menus, I've also um, implemented this neat little thing that if you hold control while clicking on a menu item, we don't close the menu like you normally would. And uh, it's a subtle little thing, but it's super handy actually. And especially if you want to do something like try out different themes, for example, you might wonder, well, what would it look like if I would switch to this theme? But you don't actually want to go and uh, reopen the menu every time. Anyway, uh, so that's something. And oh, also about menus, you can actually opt out of having a menu bar by simply going in the window menu and removing it like this. It's a per window setting. Um, available in any window that has menus. Uh, okay, and uh, a new application this month is the new tip application, which uh, gives you a tip of the day. So um, this is sort of intended as a place where we can give you interesting tips. And uh, I've already <laughs> picked up one or two things from here that I totally forgot about. So looking forward to seeing more and more tips added to it. Of course, you can get more and more tips here. Uh, so this was made by Thank You Very Cool, so very awesome. And uh, speaking of Thank You Very Cool, they also updated the widget gallery application. So this has now been rewritten in the GML language. And um, it's, it's just uh, showcases a, a bunch more of the functionality and uh, it's very, very useful for testing. Um, so that's, that's cool. So thank you, thank you, very cool. That's very cool. And um, since we're a Unix, we now also have a Fortune application. This was added by Ben. Um, so it picks out silly quotes from the IRC channel and uh, even provides context. <laughs> and uh, this thing here actually has a link to the IRC log. Uh, it's extremely nerdy. So thank you, Ben, for adding this Fortune implementation. Um, and, oh, let's look at some other command line tools, actually. So I did one called shot, which um, takes a screenshot. It's very, very simple, but uh, it's a good thing to have. And um, Janos has added a DD utility. So it's a classic Unix-style DD program for uh, copying things to block devices and such. Very, very nice. And um, if we take a look at something else, like, um, oh, let's look at the browser. So new in the browser um, is, uh, so I've done a bunch of work on exposing CSS to uh, web content. So the CSS object model uh, through JavaScript, and it's not quite finished, but uh, work is ongoing. 
Um, Linus has implemented a bunch of JavaScript things, and uh, we actually now support the relative indexing method, which is a stage three proposal for JavaScript that we support already, so that's pretty cool. And uh, Timothy has been working on layout stuff recently, so uh, I know he's been working on XKCD, making it render uh, correctly in the browser, and as you can see here, it's looking pretty pretty good, so that's very cool. Thank you very much, Timothy, for working on that. And uh, Timothy also added a clear cache option here in the debug menu, which is really handy when you're working on browser features to be able to clear the cache. So thank you, Timothy, for that as well. Um, other stuff that's awesome is uh, we now have zip, uh, we have tar, we have unzip, gzip, Gunzip and all kinds of things because uh, Edun has been hard at work implementing various compression schemes. So we now have um, deflate compression and we have um, zip compression and all kinds of utilities and libraries to go along with it. So this is some really awesome work by Edun in the last month on that. Um, so thank you, Edun. And uh, something I worked on was uh, full system profiling. So if you are a super user, you can now grab a profile of all processes. Uh, let's enable that and then do some busy stuff and then disable it. And then we can actually open this profile. And what we see here are samples from all threads on the system, not just um, from a single process. And this allows us to uh, get a full picture of what the system is doing, not just what one individual process is doing, but what the whole system is doing. And this has been already quite helpful in tracking down startup time issues, and uh, it's something that we'll continue improving upon, obviously. Um, and there have been a bunch of ports this month. So we got uh, bzip2 port by Luke, and then there was libaug, by uh, Anik, and uh, we have a, I think, a Game Boy emulator called Chester that was added by Manuel. So a bunch of ports, and then I did some work on the SDL port. So it's now, um, we have an SDL port for Serenity, and it's now rebased on the latest development version of SDL. Previously, we were, I think, about a year behind the development, so now we're up to date again. And uh, in the last month, I've actually ported two games to the system, both of which were using SDL. So uh, the first one I did was Diablo, which you can now play on Serenity. Cool guy, uh, which, you know, this is really cool. That's uh, it's a source, um, it's a reverse engineer port of Diablo called Devolution X. So very, very cool to be able to play one of my favorite games from childhood. Shoutouts to the Devolution X team for uh, the great work on support. Um, and uh, the other game I did was Duke Nukem 3D, another classic. Um, let's see if we can get it into windowed mode here. Um, so this is based on John OF's port um, and also plays pretty well in Serenity. So two classic 90s games this month. Very, very cool. Uh, let's uh, close that. And I think, actually, it will <laughs> continue chewing CPU, so I just have to kill it. These ports are not quite perfect yet, but uh, it's still awesome to be able to see these games on the system. Um, and then, in terms of kernel stuff, um, we have AHCI support. So Liab has done a whole bunch of awesome work on support for AHCI, uh, which gives us access to a whole range of hard drives and stuff. Um, that's really cool. And um, Jean-Baptiste has been working on large file support. So um, when I originally built the system, I, <laughs> I made the a uh, genius assumption that uh, we would never need larger than two gigabyte files, um, which of course was really dumb. And uh, Jean-Baptiste has been suffering through the exercise of bringing the system to a point where it can actually support larger files. So thank you very much for working on that. Um, and also in the kernel, 
uh, I got rid of all the variable length arrays because we had a security issue with variable length arrays recently. So now um, they're all there are no more any there are no more VLAs in the kernel, and we also use a compiler flag to uh, prevent introduction of new VLAs. Um, Brendan has added also an interesting thing called readelf checksec, uh, which you can use, and it sort of uh, gives you a quick security um, overview of any given binary. It just tells you everything is green here, so it's looking pretty good. It has all of the security features enabled. I guess that's not kernel, but it is security related, which I kind of fell into here. Um, but something that's both kernel and security related is um, that some sensitive data members in the process class are now uh, write protected at runtime in the kernel. And we selectively make that memory writable just for the brief moment in time when we need to mutate it. So stuff like the user ID of a process, it used to be in writable memory. So if you had a kernel write primitive that could write anywhere, it was very easy to overwrite the UID of a process. But now um, that is no longer trivial because that memory will be read only. So you first have to uh, gain code execution so that you can um, run some code to make that memory writable before you can overwrite the UID. So uh, a nice little mitigation there. Um, and then in, let's look at Hack Studio. So Itamar continues his work on the C++ parser and the language server. So uh, I think the latest thing he added was C++ namespaces. So now if we put this here in a goof namespace, for example, and then we look in our locator, we can see that it has picked up that all of these things are now in the goof namespace. So pretty cool. Um, I have to give credit to Itamar, he just continues working on this C++ parser and uh, it's just moving forward nicely. I'm going to switch to theme here. Um, yeah, so very awesome work. Uh, Hack Studio keeps improving as, a, as an editor and as a C++ parser. Um, so interesting to see what happens with that. Um, and then, oh yeah, so calendar. Now, if we open up the calendar app, we can see that it has a, um, a year view here, which is kind of dynamic, depending on how much space is available. This was implemented by Thank You Very Cool, and I think it's super neat. I, I like this kind of, uh, uh, I guess you would call it a responsive UI. Um, very nifty. Uh, so thank you, thank you, very cool. And um, I'm probably forgetting many things, but uh, maybe let's take a look at the spreadsheet. So, foo bar, <laughs> bar, wait, this thing needs some uh, work on the ergonomy. Foo bar baz, uh, one, two, wait, why did they go away? Okay, this thing definitely needs work. <laughs> um, but something that's new here is that uh, we have save as, no, that's not what I was looking for. I was looking for the um, CSV import export. So this is how you get to it, apparently. I thought we had a menu for it. Yeah, so we have an import wizard if you're trying to import uh, comma-separated values. So uh, it brings up this nice wizard here where you can um, like tell the spreadsheet application about how the data is laid out in the CSV file. Of course, now everything just happened to make sense. Um, bring in a header row here, it's pretty cool. and then we can load it into the spreadsheet app. So very, very awesome work by uh, Ali here. So thank you, Ali, for continuing work on the everything that you do, like the spreadsheet app and the shell and, and everything else. And uh, shout outs to Nick, who built the wizard framework that we were also using here. Um, and 
I think maybe that's everything I wanted to show you this month. It's been a busy month as usual, a lot of fun stuff going on and uh, a lot of new people finding the project and um, messing with it for the first time. And I always love hearing um, from people who are playing with Serenity uh, for the first time. So thank you everybody who reached out with screenshots and stuff if you're playing around. Um, and I want to say a special thank you to everybody who contributed code in the last month. There's been some absolutely awesome stuff going on, and I'm really proud of everybody for the great work that you're doing. Uh, and let's continue into the next month, I guess. Um, if you ever need to find us, we are in the Serenity OS IRC channel. Uh, it's on the Freenode network. Just drop by and say hello. Uh, and thank you very much for checking in and uh, keeping up to date with the project. I will see you next time. Bye.